Um, I'm much delighted that so many of you could make it today. Um, and thank you very much for your interest in our research. Um, well, maybe first I should introduce myself. My, I'm Saruka Devakulperan, a doctoral student of Professor Katrin Amunds at the Forschungszentrum Jülich in Germany. And the topic of my project is cytoarchitectonic mapping and analysis of the thalamic BIM nucleus in 10 human postmortem brains, including the big brain too. So as you can see, a large team is working together with me on this project. And we are going to talk about the BIM nucleus today, which plays an important role in the, treat in the neurosurgical treatment of patients with a medication resistant tremor. I would like to start off by giving just a short introduction about the thalamus for those of us who are not uh, quite familiar with this particular region. Um, well, the thalamus is actually um, located near the center of the brain. It is a paired structure, a subcortical structure of gray matter um, that is composed of around 30 subdivisions. And it is also called the gateway to consciousness because um, it acts as a relay station, filtering information between the body and the brain. So the primary function of the thalamus is uh, to relay motor and sensory signals to the cortex. Um, but it also regulates um, alertness, wakefulness, or sleep. So as you can see, it, is, it has many essential roles in the human physiology. On the right side of the slide, you can see the structure of the thalamus in, uh, uh, in a section uh, of big brain two, in the cortical section of big brain, in the coronal section of big brain two. And yes, now we are moving on to the BIM nucleus. Actually, in general, one can say the thalamus is subdivided into three major parts uh, by a Y shaped white matter which is called the internal medullary lamina. It divides the thalamus into an anterior, medial, and a very large lateral part. Um, it is considered that the BIM nucleus is located in the ventral lateral part of the thalamus. Actually, there are so many different kind of nomenclatures uh, of the thalamus in the literature. But with this slide, I would like to emphasize the main difference between the, most, uh, between the two most commonly used nomenclatures, which are on the one hand, the nomenclature after Hustler, and on the other hand, the nomenclature after Morrill and Jones. The nomenclature after Hustler, in particular Hustler, describes the VIM nucleus, the nucleus ventralis intermedius, as a solid nucleus, while Morrill and Jones unite the rim nucleus with further regions to this VL nucleus, the ventral lateral nucleus. They assume that rim correlates with the posterior part of this VL nucleus, uh, which means a VLP nucleus, ventral lateral posterior part. Um, the nomenclature after Hustler is used in the schaltenbrand waren atlas which plays an important role in the identification of uh, stereotactic coordinates of the VIM uh, during neurosurgery. Um, the nomenclature after Morrill and Jones is also used very often, for example, by Professor Eulings in his thalamus maps, but I will refer to that later. As mentioned earlier, the VIM nucleus plays an important role for the neurosurgical treatment of patients with medication-resistant tremors, such as essential tremor or tremor-dominant uh, Parkinson's disease. Stereotactic surgery, like deep brain stimulation of VIM, can reduce the tremor significantly. And there are a number of researchers who have reported about the high success rates of VIM stimulation and also about the tremor suppressive effect on patients. However, the major problem with this very small um, VIM nucleus is that it is not clearly visible in today's available imaging techniques due to low contrast and low resolution. And therefore, the neurosurgeons mostly use indirect targeting techniques these are image-guided techniques based on atlases, such as Schaltenbrand-Warenatlas. 
Since um, the precise targeting of the rim nucleus and a comprehensive understanding of its inner structure is important for the neurosurgical success, um, we have um, investigated and mapped this rim nucleus according to cytoarchitecture in 10 human postmortem brains. And we have noticed that the most um, that the most uh, commonly uh, differentiation factors are large and darkly stained neurons. On the right side of this slide, you can see a close-up of the cytoarchitecture. And there you can see that Vim clearly has much larger and darkly stained neurons compared to its neighboring areas like VLP or VLA area. These are also other nucleus. The thalamus. In the next step, um, maybe I should give a short introduction. Um, well, Professor Oehlings, uh, he actually used the same 10 postmortem brains also for his thalamus maps. But the difference is that he actually used the nomenclature according to Morrill and Jones. So in the next step, we tried to overlay or room annotation on the thalamus maps of Professor Oehlings. And we found out that most of the time, our room annotations were located within the VLP nucleus of his thalamus maps. At some points, it was also part of his VPL nucleus. But most of the time, it was part of the VLP nucleus. So in this context, a burning question raised and um, came up and uh, it was whether VIM is an independent nucleus or if it is a part of another nucleus. And in order to answer this question and to uh, create more clarification on the hierarchical position of the VIM within the thalamus, we have conducted a texture analysis. A texture analysis is actually a quantitative tool for texture recognition, which enables the classification and quantification of brain regions in high resolution histological images. This texture analysis also uses a number of textural features, which are computed by the distribution of pixels. And the texture type is characterized by the distribution of pixels. And for this particular analysis, we have used the data of OR VIM annotations and the data of the VLP and VPL annotations from the thalamus maps by Professor Owens. And the results of this texture analysis um, are quite clear. They revealed that VIM is a solid independent nucleus and not a subunit of any other nucleus. And this statement and this result is supported by a very high statistical um, significance. This Wilkes lambda is actually a statistic that is used uh, commonly in multivariate analysis of variance. It actually tests whether there is a significant difference between two or more groups. And smaller value of Wills lambda indicate a great discriminatory ability. So in our case, the Wills lambda value was zero, which means we have a great discriminatory ability. That means there is a clear and great difference between these three nuclei. And on the right side of the slide, you can also see that these three nuclei also differ significantly from one another. So it is actually a quite clear um, message or result. Um, in the next step, uh, we try to um, visualize the rim nucleus, to visualize the spatial arrangement of the rim nucleus. And for that, we have used the Big Brain 2 data set. Um, we have investigated and mapped the rim nucleus according to cytoarchitecture at every 15th section in Big Brain 2. Afterwards, a deep learning model by Christian Schiffer uh, was trained to recognize the cytoarchitecture of VIM and to predict the delineations at every sections in between. So by using the information of both 
uh, the manual delineations and also the predicted delineations, we can visualize the VIM uh, presenting an anatomical model um, at microscopical high resolution. This reconstruction of the 3D anatomical model of the human rim is currently in progress, but uh, you can see here some examples of the predicted delineations uh, in Big Brain 2, in Big Brain 2 from anterior to posterior in coronal section. You can also see the development of the nucleus from anterior to posterior. So now I'm coming to the end of my talk, but before I finish, I would like to just uh, quickly run over the key points. Um, we, our investigations uh, show that VIM has a distinguishable cytoarchitectonic pattern. Our texture analysis um, demonstrates that VIM is an independent nucleus and it is not a part of any other nucleus. So it has a very solid function. And um, the generation of the 3D model at microscopical resolution in order to better understand the 3D architecture of the WIM nucleus is in progress. Our next step would be to generate probability maps uh, based on our mappings in 10 human brains. And then finally, we will implement these uh, probability maps into the ULIF brain atlas. So all in all, our high resolution Big Brain 2 model of the WIM and the probability maps of the WIM nucleus, uh, they should provide a basis uh, to develop new tools for the localization of WIM at microscopical resolution during neurosurger neurosurgery. So this is actually the main aim of our research. And um, yes. I'm at the end of my talk. I would like to thank you for your attention. And now I'm open for your questions. If you have. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Saruka, for your, for your talk. Um, not sure if you can see me. Thank you very much again for your talk. And um, mm -hmm. let's see if there are some questions from the audience. So Sorry, so maybe a bit of a clarification clarification question mostly, um, but you use kind of a two way approach, right? With the um, uh, both the manual segmentation and then this deep convolutional neural network, but then also this texture image image feature. And yeah, texture analysis. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and do they kind of like show the same thing? What What is your conclusion when comparing what they both show? There is this. Do they show something completely different, actually? No, actually, um, the reason for using these two methods is a different reason. The texture mm -hmm. analysis we use to answer the question whether WIM is a solid nucleus or if it is a part of any other nuclear. Maybe it might be a subunit of some other nucleus. Mm -hmm. But we have found out that this is not the case. WIM is an independent solid nucleus. That was the topic with texture analysis. And the topic with this um, deep learning uh, model is about uh, to visualize the rim in a 3D model to better understand the 3D architecture of this very important nucleus. This, uh, this nucleus is important for neurosurgeons uh, during um, neurosurgery. So that's why um, we would like to help them or maybe to um, give them a better model at microscopical resolution so they the precise targeting of this nucleus during neurosurgery might be easier right yes okay so so they know which exact area they would need to target but then of course um like there's probably quite some interpersonal variation right so that would be then the, the next step to start looking at the yeah at how this changes between people okay cool thank you very much for your question thanks all right um thank you again for the question and maybe we can have one uh one question from the audience before proceeding to to the break or if there are none um I can ask uh, Saruka if you could, if you would also benefit, you think you would also benefit from higher 
a resolution data. Yeah, yeah of course. All right. If, if I may add here, I mean, here it is very also clearly visible that that's a resolution really matters. Uh, so these, I mean, these are very really tiny differences but between the nuclei and and uh, they are all quite pale if, if you look to them at, at 20 micrometer, uh, for example. So, so one micrometer is, is mandatory, um, as Saruka also emphasized. And I mean, in, for, for future work, um, I, I would suppose that that 3D uh, would be uh, further um, support such delineations because these nuclei in, in the middle of the brain, they have sometimes a very bizarre shape. Yeah? So they have fingers and I mean, they are quite difficult in shape. It's not just a, a nucleus in the sense that there's a compact big, um, so to say region of the brain, but they are more complex as you can see here at also, for example, in section 4138. And to capture the, this shape uh, requires 3D. And of course it would be great to have also uh, unsupervised learning tools in 3D that, that could help us to verify the borders. Because as she said, the, the texture analysis just does not give you any border. It is just a test. When you have something delineated uh, to, to verify that, that this makes sense uh, to, to, I mean, with respect to quantitative data, but, but the mapping itself uh, would of course clearly benefit from, from unsupervised learning in 3D. So, so that would be my, my perspective of, to, to support projects like Sarukas in the future. Yeah, definitely. And uh, perhaps also a bit more um, uh, of the explanation of the of the models, but maybe I will not I will not start this topic right now before the before the uh, coffee break.